Well, good evening, everyone. Um, this is Bill Harris uh, coming to you on a Thursday night. Um, going to do a short discussion of a new paper we just uh, published about omega-3 fatty acids and bleeding. Um, the uh, history behind this question is, it really goes back to the beginning of the omega-3 story when doctors Dyerberg and Bang um, discovered uh, the omega-3s were uh, beneficial in studies in Greenland Eskimos. And those Eskimos they found um, had longer bleeding times um, than the control subjects they were studying. And they also did some laboratory studies that showed that EPA was actually a antagonist to uh, platelets in the sense that helped if you added EPA to, to blood platelets, which are the cells that make your blood uh, clot, contribute to blood clotting, uh, EPA would uh, reduce the risk of bleeding, um, excuse me, would reduce the risk of clotting. And so one of the, the Sentinel papers uh, in the Omega-3 story was a 19, I believe it was 1979 Lancet paper by Dr. Dyerberg and Bang, where they proposed EPA was the anti-atherosclerotic component of fish oils, and it was because there was EPA in fish oils that people um, were not having a heart attacks, and it's because it made their blood thinner, essentially, made the blood less likely to clot. Uh, so from the very beginning, the idea that uh, omega-3s would increase um, the ability of the blood to resist clotting has been there. Uh, we ourselves in the 19, um, pretty much throughout the 1980s, we were doing studies on the effects of omega-3 on bleeding, uh, studying platelet function. Again, the platelets are the little cells in your blood that will stick together uh, when you need to plug up a, uh, a cut and, and stop the bleeding. Um, and we found, uh, like many others have, that uh, high omega-3 levels did sort of increase the bleeding time, which was a, a metric we used in those days. And so there was an increased risk. There not increased risk for bleeding. There was increased uh, bleeding, but it was not important. It was, not, it was on the level of uh, how much bleeding you get if you take an aspirin. So it was not a serious issue. Nevertheless, the idea got into the literature uh, particularly the surgical literature, that omega-3s would cause people to bleed. And so typically people going for surgery uh, were told to uh, either stop taking omega-3 or if they were on omega-3 when they came in for surgery, they were, their surgery was postponed uh, so that they could stop taking the omega-3s. Um, unfortunately, you, you can stop for a few days and take omega-3s and it's not going to change your blood omega-3 levels at all. <laughs> Excuse me, um, but uh, that's that's a, a detail and subtlety that most uh, surgeons don't understand. Uh, nevertheless, the idea was don't be on omega threes, and we don't think that makes sense. Uh, we think, in fact, the FDA has said that omega threes don't cause clinically significant bleeding, uh, and that's on the package inserts for all the omega three drugs. So it's not a concern as far as the FDA is concerned. Uh, nevertheless, we have continued to pursue this question of omega-3s and bleeding, and we did this most recent study in a paper with uh, Dr. Mozaferian and his colleagues at Tufts um, as part of a larger study called the OPERA study. And OPERA uh, is a study where we were looking to see if giving omega-3 fatty acids before open heart surgery would prevent atrial fibrillation or the irregular heartbeat after surgery. This is a common side effect of open heart surgery. It's an annoyance, it's a problem. Um, there was some evidence that the omega-3s might be able to prevent this problem after, after surgery. And so the idea here was let's give a lot of omega-3 a few days before surgery because you, you haven't got much time. If somebody's scheduled for um, open heart surgery, uh, they don't usually have a month or two to wait. They usually have a day or two to wait. And so the reality was we had to get a lot of omega-3 in for a few days before surgery to see if that would prevent, again, the atrial fibrillation, the irregular heartbeat after surgery. Uh, so we were giving six, seven, eight grams of omega-3 fatty acid a lot over two or three days before surgery. Uh, and then about two grams a day, a little under two grams a day from day 
after surgery until they were discharged. Um, as it turned out, the primary study was uh, the, the question we were studying uh, turned out to be not the case. Omega-3s did not prevent, didn't make it any worse, but it didn't pre prevent the atrial fibrillation. Um, so that was a clear answer for that. One of the side um, metrics that's always measured in surgery studies is how much bleeding happens. And so there were several metrics or measurements of bleeding as sort of secondary safety endpoints in the study. And we went back and looked at those and we found a very interesting thing. Uh, first of all, we found that the giving the omega-3s did not increase any bleeding during surgery. The surprising thing was the, actually the omega-3 treated people were less likely to need as much blood transfused as the controlled folks, the people on placebo. So for, in, for some reason, and we really don't know why, have, may have to do with some anti-inflammatory properties of the omega-3s. But there was actually less need for blood, uh, less bleeding, essentially. Um, we also looked at uh, blood omega-3 levels in these people on the morning of surgery. And we found that if you look at the spectrum of low to high omega-3 level in the blood, those people that had the highest omega-3 levels were the ones who had the least lowest risk of having a bleed. And so not only did we show in this study that omega-3s are not uh, increasing your risk for bleeding, they actually were decreasing your risk for bleeding uh, in this particular setting of, of cardiac surgery. Now, that's a unique setting. Uh, but nevertheless, it makes the point that we think yes, surgeons should not be telling people or not be worried about omega-3s. Certainly, if people are on omega-3, they should be able to stay on it. It shouldn't prevent anybody from having to go uh, into surgery. And uh, people should not be having to go off omega-3s because we think it's good for them to be having an anti-inflammatory product like omega-3s on board when they go uh, for their surgical procedure. Uh, so this study, and I'll just show you what it, it uh, looks like. It's a, a study that was published in uh, one of the circulation journals called Fish Oil and Perioperative Bleeding. Uh, and this study, um, again, was uh, done with a, a large group of people, and we were happy to find that there really was no increased risk for bleeding. On the contrary, there was a reduced risk for bleeding in those people who got the omega-3 fatty acids. So the take-home message from this paper and from a variety of other studies that we've done and others have done is that omega-3s, even if you take them with uh, other uh, blood thinning agents like aspirin, like Plavix, uh, like um, heparin, like uh, warfarin, Coumadin, uh, these are all blood thinning agents that uh, if you take omega-3 with them will not increase your risk for bleeding. And so the omega-3s can be taken, uh, really have no important drug interactions in the bleeding world. And I think that's the whole, the take home message from this study. And I uh, hope that was helpful for you. Um, keep taking the omega-3s, they're good for you. And don't worry about people who say they're gonna increase the risk for bleeding because they don't. Take care. Any questions, please uh, send them our way. We'll try to answer them. Uh, if you found this interesting, uh, please pass this along to your friends. Thank you.